You will not get standard tips like listen to happy music or distracting or running away from yourself. You get profound and extensive solutions if you're in the situation of a heavy melancholic phase. What to do in extremely melancholic phases? On your path to the inner self-development, which is kind of a true path where you resolve consciousness and develop so that you get the contact and the access to the higher consciousness, to your higher self. But on that way, there are often throwbacks. In this video, we will talk about what to do in that heavy melancholic phases, how to deal with the isolation, especially when you have an appointment or any meeting in kind of an everyday life. Also, we will talk about creating good routines and how to deal with the concentration problems. But first of all, a small hint, sometimes melancholy could also be an ordinary depression. You have to check up first at the doctor, because in my case, it is so that I have the thyroid problems and the melancholic phase only came from an organic problem. After adjusting the medicine, then I have to wait two, three weeks. It becomes better automatically. So it's not an official or an melancholy which comes deep out of the soul of course even when you see the body mind problem the disease once occurred for certain reasons you will find in the video where i talked about my life story so i want to prevent that you are not falling in the same trap we now here talk from melancholic faces related to this inner self-development when you are going to the connectedness to the enlightenment on your way in this time of spiritual awakening and as long as you suffer there from falling back, then you have two steps forward. It's better than sometimes, then you fall back. So, and not to suffer so much. From my experience, out of seven years, I have collected all the information you can get in different sections in this video. How to deal with the overthinking, which occurs especially when you are in a heavy melancholic phase. First of all, congratulations. Because when you tend to overthink, then your consciousness is very far developed. It's only that the mind strives to get information, but you are not so interested in the ordinary information which most people strive for, like news or new games or, you know, all this stuff. You are striving for maybe for the big questions. Why are we actually here? Who is this I? Is there something else? These questions are interesting for you. So... Your overthinking when it's on the right direction, it's actually not bad per se. But basically, overthinking comes from the ego and we also have still the tendency to fall back in that negative thinking, in the downward spiral of thinking and feeling, actually. That's a natural thing. The ego actually tries to protect us. It's from the very early mankind that the ego wants safety first. And that means it thinks about past and future it takes experiences from the past especially negative ones and projects them on the future and so we think about the next step it could be negative again the next time and so that's how ego holds most people in the overthinking but you are not so full of appointments and don't worry about the future so much especially when you're in a very heavy melancholic phase your negative thinking is sometimes even entangled with negative emotions as well as the normal people which also have the same problem, but your negative emotions are even heavier because they are attacking you more because you don't have so much to do as all the others. They are entangled in kind of everyday life. Right? They have so much to do, so much business, so much free time activities. So, But you are more free and so ego and the emotions attack you more and even the heaviest ones, anxiety and guilt, they try to pull you mostly down. Also, there is sadness from time to time, but you can bear it even better than most of the people because sadness, when you are a melancholic face, sadness is always there. It's normal for us. So we don't worry about things so much. But sometimes there is a useless guilt which tries to pull us down, especially when we had a conversation with someone, with an unconscious person. It can happen that they blame us for nothing and we feel guilty for no reasons. And then again and again, the thoughts come up and try to blame us for no, we are not good enough. We don't fit in society. We are so melancholic. We are not so active like the others. We are not so lively. So what's wrong with us? So you say in, to yourself only, I say us because I mean you and me, but see, you 
we say it to ourselves. No? Our minds in the melancholy phase try to use the overthinking often for this kind of thinking. And again, it brings us to entanglement because many people want to run away from the feelings of guilt or from anxieties. And so they try to entangle with others just to distract. And that's the problem. So you fall in the same trap like the ordinary people which don't develop, but we want to develop. So it's better to avoid entanglement or useless entanglement. And the feeling of guilt even drives us to become a people pleaser. Many Christians and other people on spiritual paths, they are tending to become a people pleaser. They are, of course, you become better and more ethical. And so, and you want to make this world a better place, of course, because you're kind of a bodhisattva. You have the inner striving to make the world a better place. But this people pleasing also leads you sometimes in traps with negative people, which even bully you for that for no reasons and so this entanglement is not good and this too much people pleasing is also not good so see the difference here between people pleasing and helping others because sometimes it is too much that we give and so just set your own borders inner borders otherwise this people pleasing can lead to a big energy loss which is coming from the emotional problems which are caused by people who bully you or to misuse your good deeds or your helpings. If they ask again and again and you are endless helping, helping, helping and never calming, so then it brings you out of balance. But the point here, instead of over people pleasing, is better to observe the emotions deal with the emotions which stand behind that and this is anxiety and guilt and some others also sometimes from time to time which are not beer too easy not as like sadness and these things we are, can already be with because they are always there we are always dealing with them but there are some which are very heavy and they are also partially natural for example guilt there is a natural guilt which comes from the separation from god of course, we have to feel guilty because we are separated from God. This is what you want to explain with the fall from paradise in Bible. Paradise, everything was okay. We were connected with God all the time. Our higher self was there. So, But then people began to think from their self, to leave God, to stop, to let be led by God. In earlier times, God led them, the past of lead. So you were always led by God. And suddenly they've tried, they started to think for themselves. They started to use their own mind. And that's the fall. Then the fall began thousands of years ago. So the Bible explains. And that was the natural guilt, the main guilt. And all the other guilt, what people blame on you, is actually crap. So you can ignore it, actually. But what happens is that it triggers sometimes your natural guilt because you are more natural, you are more pure when you are so far developed. And that can happen that people, when they trigger you, that this main guilt also is triggered. But it feels much more intense than at normal people. Even John of the Cross, the Catholic saint, said that people in the dark night of the soul, which is also kind of a melancholic phase, those ones tend to feel more guilty, but for no reasons. Often it is just over guilt, which is even supported by sadness and lead into more guilt, like a downward spiral, sadness, guilt, sadness, guilt. So because you feel even distracted from God, you feel that there is something wrong, connectedness is missing. And so it can happen that two emotions or even more emotions cause a downward spiral. Sometimes even anxieties are involved. Your soul knows this already. You are so far developed. And the last hint here is try to avoid work, especially trade, because trade entangles so much and causes even more guilt. Because, see, whenever you are in business and are after the money, then you tend to create an advantage for you because you want to win. Sometimes when you're a very good businessman, a very developed one, you try to create a win-win situation that the customer has a good product for a good price, but also there is a small win for you. But it can happen in trade, it depends on the company or wherever you are, that your boss expects only to have the bigger win for the company or for you. And there is not really a win. For example, when they cheat on customer or when they sell them crap for too much money. So in business, it can happen very fast. That our soul, Because our soul knows that there is the distraction from God. 
and that we have been fallen and that there is this main guild. And so even from small guild, it will be triggered. So that's why I say trade is to avoid. Of course, you have to do small trades, which is like shopping for your own food in everyday life. That is okay. I don't want to be too strict yet. See, there are some things which are okay, but this is even enough trade. Don't make even more trade. Try to find a sustainable job. Try to find something which is good for your soul. The first two things you can do is reading and meditation. I would recommend these two things because these are the only ones you can do whenever you have concentration. But how often it appears we don't have the concentration on the path during the spiritual awakening. There are times we have lots of concentration and much energy when we just have been connected in that higher connectedness after then. We are full of energy, but suddenly there are these outfalls and then we lose so much energy sometimes, but sometimes there is still energy, but on another level, on the spiritual level, but for the mental level, there is not so much. And then we have the lack of concentration. Reading is not possible. Meditation is not possible. So whenever concentration is there, I would recommend, first of all, try these things. And meditation is always the best, of course, and reading about spiritual things whatever is your interest there but it's important to use these times of concentration but what to do now when there is not the concentration the first thing if you like some of the things or like if you actually love to read to write such things that would be the diary diary always helps even if there is no concentration you can write anything even you can write about the lack of concentration so like you take your diary and you write so today again such a big lack of concentration so how can i deal with it let's go out and yes like this you consider even that and sometimes even the diary will help you it can happen that whenever you have written it down, suddenly the concentration gets better. As if something like a higher spirit would read what you are writing and then it helps you and you get more concentration. I don't know why this is. If you believe in something, maybe that's why. Just try it, but don't expect. That's the next thing. Whenever there is a God, you can't force God to do things, to support you sometimes you can sometimes things but then it can also be that this is only your own soul parts which help you when you give advice and suddenly it happens but it can also be there is something higher involved but never force that would be better you can just ask friendly <laughs> but never force because god doesn't let force in on a social level, people force each other and they even fulfill the need of each other sometimes. But on the divine level, this doesn't work. So forget it to force. Just write it down only for yourself without the expectation or write whatever comes. Now, maybe the concentration like is due to a mental problem when there is a block because of you had a confrontation with a negative person or something like this in everyday life then also you will solve this and at the end it can happen that the concentration appears and then you can go for reading or for something else but if you don't like writing no problem we also have other solutions what you can do is to listen to something you can listen to an audiobook so for those people who don't like to read or who are not able to read maybe it works better with hearing the same with YouTube videos. You can watch YouTube videos like this. You don't have to look at the person which is always on the screen all the time because it's always the same person looking the same way. It's not a perfect actor, so there is nothing really to see. So you can also lay your phone somewhere. And now it comes in, which counts also for audiobooks and which is good when you also have the lack of concentration because this will always work. You can clean your room or tidy up something while listening to a video. When you're not already doing this, especially for long audiobooks or videos, it is very good when you tidy up, clean your room, whatever is to do. There always something is to do. So we can do, even you can sort things. Even your room is, maybe you're a very clean person, your room is clean already. So you can sort things. You go to a cupboard, you throw out all the stuff and then you sort it new or you, you know, these things and the material stuff you can do because they are so easy they don't need so much extra mental work 
And they are so easy. That's why we always push them and don't want to do them. But when you are hearing an audiobook, then there is the concentration lag. Then you can solve two problems at the same time. And on the one hand, you can listen to an audiobook, which is actually like a book when your concentration is so bad. But on the other hand, also, you can clean the room or do something which you always have pushed because it appeared too boring. So you do two good things at the same time. This actually I developed in the COVID-19 time. So we were so much in the room and then I tried to make the best from that. And for those ones of you who are even more active, also what we can do is sports. Sports always work even it is independent from concentration. And the good thing is after the sports, your concentration will be better. As meditators, we are very lazy. There is also a video about that. And this laziness drives us to reduce sporty activities and other, you know, highly active things. So, and that is not good because still we have the body and the body needs that. We should not exaggerate, of course, but from time to time, it is good to do some sports. And whatever you like there, yeah, it could be very heavy, like jogging very fast, but it can also be something very slow or very easy or something even with fun. If you know someone and you can do a competition or you can do ball sports where you are in a team or something and you will have fun also. It depends. No? Even every kind of sports can let grow your concentration and you will see after the sports, you will feel far better. But for those ones of you who can't do sports or are not will to do sports, you can even just go for a walk. Especially when your mind is in the overthinking so much and it's blah, blah, blah. And even in the mind wandering also, that is a new word from current research. It's doing mind wandering. It wanders here and there and, you know, you know all this and all these thoughts they are useless it, it wanders through so many different topics and but what you can do is to really wonder with your body and this will calm your mind suddenly not when you expect it then you will see afterwards when you have not expected it when you just go for a walk because you if you like to go for a walk you have to go for a walk if you someone if you are someone who don't like to go for a walk then you better take the sports or when you need more activities or you take the audiobook and what i have mentioned here you should not follow all advices only that would be too silly you decide for yourself and make your choice which of these advices you want to do because it's up to the personality not all advices help everyone I have just collected them from my experience and maybe you have even others. Just one more hint for the sorting thing. When you sort things, even material things, that would also sort your mental area. And at the end, really, you can gain more concentration because something sorted in order is always good. Also in religions and philosophies, it is said that God or the divine things are in an order and the opposite, the negative things are in chaos. Or even they say the devil is the chaos. So, But this is too easy explained and age-old stuff. But if you like it, that divine things, it is really that the order brings you to more concentration. You will see it. And rest is chaos and causes a lack of concentration. Just Take some things, sort some things, and you will see it happens afterwards. Even if you expect it, it doesn't help. So with all things. But if you just do it for your joy and you forget even time, it would be the best thing when you not do it under time pressure, when you can have the time and you forget everything. And are so concentrate. suddenly you are concentrated on the sorting things. At the beginning you are not. But while sorting, more and more concentration already appears, not just afterwards. Sometimes it appears afterwards. Sometimes it appears already while doing that. And when then there is the order, also other things happen. Not only the concentration, also it can happen that the meditation works again because the order is there. The divine things love more the order. And the bad spirits love more the chaos. It is sad. That would be maybe interesting for some spiritual people. How to handle the need for seclusion? When you are in a very melancholic phase, an extremely melancholic phase, of course, there is a much higher need for seclusion. And my advice, just do it. 
it's even supportive for meditation. Meditation is working so bad. Concentration, all these other things, they are working not so well in the dark night so fast. They are working not so good in the very heavy melancholic face but when you're isolated then maybe sometimes these things work better and when other people say that it's not okay that it's not normal so don't care if you feel it is good then you do it but you also have to trust your feeling because it's ambivalent actually because on the one hand your higher soul parts they need the seclusion that's, of course, why monks and other people which were very religious in the past, that they secluded themselves for development. And the purpose behind is that the higher self needs that seclusion, especially for meditation. And, of course, there are many things to do for your development, also self-reflection or just reading. So we need it. And you know it. But the ambivalent point is that, on the other hand, the lower soul bars are still there. And when we have too much seclusion, then they will bite us. Then our ego will bite us. So because it doesn't like the isolation, it likes the distraction, it likes to be with people. It is old like it thinks we are still animal like and we have to be surrounded and be protected from the herd, from other ones. We are still not like a herd. Jesus was just using it as picture because people believe and people behave like we ha need a herd. We have to be together like the sheep or like any other animals in a kind of a herd. But as humans, it is possible to live alone. It's even necessary. Even Jesus did it. Buddha, all these guys, they went alone from time to time. So you also can do it. But on the other hand, the ego is still there because when you are not enlightened it yet, when you are in the dark night or in other, or you have other reasons that there is the heavy melancholic phase, then you go in the seclusion. But from time to time, you go out, you visit friends. Not like going out like the ordinary people. You don't have to entangle in a bar or something like that. Of course, no substances. I will come to that point also. You meet a single friend, not only a group. You can also, if it's possible, you have a group, a small group maybe. Nothing which over-challenges you. No? Nothing, not so extroverted people which want to go out or something. Yeah, you know, you will find the right people which be supportive, which are even going the same way or are interested in what you are doing. So just relax people and then you will find your right way. Meeting them from time to time will be good for your ego part, will calm the ego, that the ego also get a kind of a reward because it likes to be among people from time to time. So just also we have to care for the ego still as well as we have to care for the body also, even if we don't want to have it, we feel it as prison, we want to be only consciousness. There's also a video about that. But see... Body is still there, ego is still there, so we have to care also. That's the other side. So sometimes we have to avoid the seclusion. An extra tip is, of course, you go into nature, and in the nature you find only a few people which are also interested in the nature, or which just have to go with the dog. <laughs> but basically, nature is good because you have to avoid cr crowd or many people or big groups or so because even you will feel it is uncomfortable for you so nature is the best you will have people with similar interests you will, could be better in the here and now you could be more aware about life meditation maybe is also possible there the fresh air the sunlight everything will also reduce the melancholy that is also a helpful aspect in nature but this should not be the main reason. The main reason is that you have a few people, don't entangle too much, and that you have more nature, more still kind of a seclusion, but also there are less people and most of them you don't personally know. So you are free in talking with someone or not. And this independence is the aspect here in the nature. But when you meet people which you know, 
whether it is in nature or it is in the city, you should always care that you don't adjust too much. When you have not the same friends which are of the same interest of the enlightenment of this development, when you have normal friends which have other interests, you must be very careful that you don't adjust too much only to have this friendship. But it is not good for your development when you go for the enlightenment and the other people not. And still you can be friends, but you don't have to adjust to them too much. It is better to explain why you go another way. And when they don't understand and they will run away, then you will get new friends, maybe from nature. But see, the point is, when you adjust, this will be an obstacle on your path to the development or to the consciousness, to the higher consciousness. Because the normal people, they behave in wrong ways. They know they come on this earth, then they have to marry, they have to get children, and they die like this. And in between, they need some money, and then they have to work. So that's all, actually. And they forget the enlightenment, they forget this development, and that they can there have only the true luck, the true fortune, because they are all looking for something good, some fortune, but fortune they will never find in running after the money, after the job, after the cars, smartphones, whatever there is. So they have a wrong mindset. And when they entangle you so much, then you will lose your path. This is dangerous. Okay, in a melancholic phase, nobody can bring you away from your thought. But still, it can happen. So it is good then to not spend too much time with them. Or when you spend, you have to stay on your standpoint that you are as you are and they have to accept you as you are. You don't adjust too much. That is dangerous because your path is so important. It's very seldom. And not everyone will like you, but it is good and it is the best you still stay there, even if it's melancholic. But even when you entangle in job, you also can get depression, which is kind of melancholia. So don't care so much about what people think and just be as you are, even if you don't like yourself sometimes. Even that can happen, that we don't like ourselves for being so different from the others. And even then still you follow your path. That is very important. The problem is that it is not a well-known path, but it's the most essential one. And especially when you are as you are. And so you are perfect already, even with some imperfections. Of course, we all have them. You are as you are, and then the right people will follow you. Even that is good. So don't care on holding on old friendships so much. And to hear a basic tip, just create personal routines for yourself from all of the information which you get until now. Since about, I think, eight or nine years, I developed for me a routine which starts with drinking a tea in the morning. After then, I also drink water. And I continue. I don't even leave the house before I not have drunk in one liter of water. And besides that, there is a reading routine or a writing routine, whatever appears. But I stay at home for the first few hours. But you don't have to drink the tea. You just arrange it how you want. But now it comes to appointments. How to deal with appointments, meetings, or just going out. Especially when you are in a very heavy, melancholic phase. It is so hard to only function for a job or for any appointment and to be there in time, even to be on a place, on a certain place in a certain time is so much effort for us. In a melancholic phase. There I can recommend that we can stay in meditation as best as possible is to go in time there that you are even maybe half an hour too early but you can just go very slow and always try to not think of the future of the appointment. This is also a problem when you are in a melancholic phase. You are maybe suffering from overthinking. Then it appears that you think of the appointment already. Your mind tries to talk what will happen, what can happen, what may happen. But this is the worst case we try to avoid. So we go in time and try to go to take already the way to the appointment as a meditation path. 
always try to tell the mind, no, this is not important now. Don't think about the future. Just focus on the here and now every step. Or when you sit in the bus or somewhere, you are just concentrating on that. Actually, this is also a meditation method already. When you go in the here and now, that is one method. But also there is another method hidden. When you go to an appointment or to any place, you are just in observation. You can observe yourself. That is a very good opportunity. Every appointment or going out is a good opportunity to observe ourselves, to observe the thoughts, the emotions, what arises when you see a thing. Is there maybe inner judgment on others or something like this? So this is also a big opportunity for a additional meditation. And another big opportunity besides meditation is when you go out, even in a melancholic, in a very heavy melancholic phase, that this is always a chance to get to know more about yourself with the observation, for example, but also get to know about more about the unconscious people to understand them better from your new view as a spiritual person. Earlier, you have been also entangled maybe in everyday life, but now you observe the unconscious people from a new view, not a judgmental view, but only you try to take it as it is, but to handle in future better with that. And this is not about thinking of future. You just be aware what happens, what they are doing to understand them better. And this is a big chance so that even we can motivate us with this thought in the morning when there are so many thoughts which try to prevent us from standing up and going to appointment. Then we can think that it's an opportunity, a positive opportunity to go out to learn more about life and people and these things even in a heavy melancholic phase. This would be maybe even the only reason, ne? because when you think you will take this opportunity, this, that this is an opportunity for meditation, then also the melancholic mind will say, no, meditation doesn't work. When it does not work even in the house, it will not work even outside. So you would stay in the house. That would be not the best case. But when you think it's an opportunity to understand unconscious people better, because the melancholic mind tends to think negative. And when you think about unconscious people also, this is a negative thought, actually. So maybe this will motivate the melancholic mind from which we suffer to go out, to go to the appointment. And whatever happens, that there no anxiety arises, not thinking of the meditation will follow on your path when you are going to the appointment. But it's not a good for a motivation at the beginning. Consider that for most of you. For others who are more developed, of course, there are some of you for them, it counts that even in the melancholic phase that the argument, oh, I can go out for meditation, this can also motivate. It's very different from person to person. It depends on the temperament. But to hold upright this positive mindset of being open-minded to learn something new, even about unconscious people, this is always good. Being open-minded always is good on our path, in every case, for every temperament. But how to arrange now appointments? Before you arrange appointments and you suffer from the appointments, you can, whenever you got a new appointment, you can manage when to get them. Which time is better for you, in the morning or in the afternoon? They always ask you at the doctor or somewhere, right? You consider which time is better for you. This is depending also from the temperament. For me, for example, I always skip the Monday. In Germany, we have even a proverb which which says, and this is also rhyme in English, Monday is Shande. Shande not in the sense of avoiding something for, in a negative way when someone is afraid from something and he's avoiding. Shun in the sense of relaxing, enjoying life. So we skip the Monday to do nothing. But for me, it was because of my work life earlier, before I went on this meditation path on the self-development. I suffered many years from I have to be in work on Monday morning. Even the whole Sunday afternoon, I suffered already thinking of the next day. Oh my God, tomorrow is that Monday. I hate to go there. I don't want to go to work. So always the same thing. Every week, all my life, I think about 10, 15 years. And since seven or eight years, I skipped the Monday because, as you could imagine, to break these old habits and patterns. This is still, see, our ego, our mind is like a 
saving machine. It saves everything. Everything is already in our genes, all these beliefs. And so, and to get these things out, I arranged my life so that even on university, I don't have any course on Monday. When there is an alternative, I always choose a different one. And when then it comes to appointments, they gave me appointments. For my temperament, it's good to have the appointments on only one, two days in a week. And then I try to combine them that there are all appointments on only one or two days and the rest of the week is free. But for another temperament, it's good to have every day only one appointment and the rest of the day is free. But it depends. No? You don't have to do it this way or that way. Even you have a third way, which I have not mentioned or forgotten. See, let me know just below in the comments if you have other ideas or other things which could be maybe interesting for other listeners also. The same, of course, counts for calls. I also try to lay them together, to combine them, that there is kind of a calling hour where I do all these calls and then the rest of the week, please, no phone. But you can manage how you want it. Feel free. Look on your temperament also. And never forget to strive for the higher self. These were only points for now when there is still the ego which we want to overcome so that we can arrange the life in duality well. But of course, we are about overcoming that, living together with the higher self, which is actually there already, but the access is lacking. And that's why we are suffering and are in this melancholy phases. And I just wanted to bring some ideas which I have implemented in my life the last years since I had this higher connectedness. And again, these fallouts come. And that's why I want to help others then also. And the extra hint, avoid substances. I know you already do. Otherwise, you would not be on this channel. You are a meditator or you are even someone. Even there are blockades sometimes. But some of you have big progress. Some of you strive for the progress. So wherever you are, you know that you have to avoid the substances. And I just want to remind you that. Because, you know, whenever there is any substance, I don't mean the illegal ones. Even, of course, this you avoid. But I mean even... The official or the allowed ones, the alcohol, the caffeine, whenever there comes a high, also you have to consider a low will come the next day or even at the same day. So first you have the pleasure from the substance and after then there will be the opposite side, the negative side of the pleasure. That's why even the Stoic philosophers recommended to not party too much, to not do this stuff. Always to stay in the middle, not to become too high, then you will also not get too low, especially when you are in a situation to be in an extremely melancholic phase. You have to avoid substances. Even coffee, it is so hard for some, I know, but even that, it would be good that you avoid. And not only in the melancholic phase, in general, because the aspect with the confusion is that your consciousness is confused. We are on consciousness development, so the consciousness always has to be clear. And so already it is meditation when you observe yourself, when you are able to observe your emotions, your thoughts, whatever arises, and you stay calm and not entangled with the own thoughts, with the own emotions. You know they are there. We accept them. We deal with them. We develop. But to have this kind of healthy distance it is the best thing when we are clear when we have as much clarity as possible in our consciousness and that's why it is so important to avoid the alcohol the caffeine and everything but for some of you who are really in an extremely melancholic phase i understand already that makes it easier because that is the only good thing in the melancholic phase or in the dark night of the soul that you automatically lose your interest in everything and including substances, including coffee, including alcohol. But some even drink more when they don't know about higher things already. Then the tendency is there that someone is drinking too much. But on the other hand, when you have the knowledge and know that it is better to avoid, then you avoid it and to be clear for the development. But the good thing is that out of the interest or the lack of interest in everything, automatically in a very melancholic phase, there is the opportunity that 
we avoid substances automatically. So addictions can disappear automatically. Our soul with the melancholic, even John of the Cross says that in the dark night, that we lose interest is already part of the progress. And that is so good. So automatically we lose our addictions without giving effort. So actually God is steering our soul that we lose these addictions automatically. And that is the good thing. But also be careful. Phone addiction is also an addiction. There's also stuff on this channel. Of course, you can watch good videos like this, where you get profound content, where you get content where someone explains from their experiences of melancholic phases like this, and you learn something how to deal it for yourself. That is good. Also, other videos, other channels are also good. But you have to make choices here. Don't waste your time too much in wrong videos, in surface crap, you know, all this stuff. Oh, sometimes a funny video is okay. You can watch the funny cats or whatever you like there, but not for hours or so. That would be distracting your soul too much. And that would also bring the wrong joy that is kind of a high first and then the low comes of boredom or of, if you continue, it becomes addiction. Because what is substance is for our stomach or for whatever we consume. For the eyes, the substance consumption is the movie screen or the games or whatever is there. Everything is available nowadays. So it is critical and you have to make so many choices here. The best thing is go out, go in nature, go for a walk or something of the other hints you have already. And the last hint, especially for the phone, is to have two phones. Now, this could maybe appear like having more addiction, but it's not. Because you separate the phones only on one phone, there is the WhatsApp, the Facebook Messenger, and these messaging apps and other stuff also. But one phone is only for yourself. To Google, if you want to know something, you need a word or you need to translate something, only that you use the Google, the browser. And maybe a notepad when you want to write down something want to take notes about your self-development, like kind of a diary, a digital diary. One phone should be only for you when you are alone. Also, YouTube can be there that you get some insights that you can work with that. And then you have a diary app or something like this. So it's only for you. No connection, no activities on the social level because this will distract so much. And on the second phone, which you only check once a day or what is even better is if you can and you are not too entangled, you check it only every second day. Nobody will die in that time. Everything will be fine. The point is, a few years ago, even 10 years ago, there was no WhatsApp or so. Or maybe just it was in the beginning. But then everyone was not connected all the time. And that was even more relaxing. So try, if you can, to abolish, to watch on these messaging apps every day. And that's the best thing when you have a second phone, an old phone or something, that you have one phone only for you. And one is for the connection with the others. But you also have to find the connection, the true connection first in yourself. And therefore, you have to be alone. And therefore, it is good you have a phone which will not connect you to the outside world, to the social level, so that you do your own work on yourself first. Hope some hints could help you. Have a nice week. See you soon. Bye.